G'day guys. Today I want to talk about eight different strategies you can use for dealing with your physical limitations as you get older. You can't do the things that you used to do so easily. Today I uh, actually did something that I probably shouldn't have done, but you'll see it a little bit later in the video. Okay, so the first one is look at modifying your uh, favourite sports, your existing sports that you do. As you probably know, I'm a tennis coach and I spent my whole life playing tennis. But what's really big in tennis now, or it's changed to a thing called pickleball. And pickleball is much easier to play, especially for seniors, as people get much older. Uh, it's much easier, you don't have to run around too much. The balls are slower, so physically, it's much easier to play than regular tennis, but it's really taking off, especially in the US. But now, uh, you know, all around the world, like even in Australia, it's starting to really take off. So that's an example. So instead of trying to get out and run around a tennis court, which, uh, you know, if you can, it's great, but it's physically much more demanding. So pickleball is a sport that's developed. And it's like a cut down version of tennis, if you like. So the rackets are smaller, the court's much smaller. And uh, so it's very popular, especially for older people. And it's great fun. So that's uh, an example of the first one, point number one. So follow on from that, point number two, is seek out things that are less physically demanding. Maybe they're more mentally demanding. Um, yeah, and there's lots of uh, examples of that. So instead of uh, doing the things that you've done in the past, when you were younger, when you were more able, your body was fitter and stronger, look at uh, things that you can do that you don't need that, uh, that amount, the same amount that you used to have. You know, we all can feel it as we get older. You just physically can't do the things that you used to do. We all want to do them but you can't do them. So look at different types of activities that are you know, more suited to us as we get older. They're still just as enjoyable. So it's just a matter of opening your mind and seeking out uh, alternatives to what you've been doing you know, for lots of years. You can still enjoy these new activities just as much. So definitely try to do that. The next one is have a focus on maintenance and uh, you know, look into more of the stretching and yoga and balance and those types of activities. You know, I know I don't do enough of that. I don't do enough stretching. It's one thing that I've got to do a lot more of. If you, uh, you know, maintain your stretching and your balance is another very important one as you get older, then you're much more likely to stay healthy you know, as you get much older, one of the biggest issues people have is they fall over. So they tend to lose their balance, fall over. And I know there's all sorts of statistics about when you fall over and if you break your hip, I think your chances of dying within six months, you know, go through the roof. So balance is very important flexibility so stretch you know maybe as I said do some yoga take up those sorts of things very low impact on your body so you're not going to do yourself any harm and you can give yourself massive benefits if you take up those type of activities the next point is embrace technology technology is designed to make your life easier make it better so look into technology, don't be scared of technology. Do some research. You know, one of the things that I check every day, I've got a Samsung smartwatch. So that tells me how many steps I do every day, which is really motivating. When you look at that, you set a target for your steps and you reach that target and a little fanfare thing goes off and you know, puts streamers everywhere. And it definitely helps with your motivation if you know that if you can just go that little bit further, 
uh, yeah, you get rewarded for it. And it accumulates, builds up over time. It's a little bit like compound interest if you keep doing it every day. Another little app that I've got on my phone is a habit tracker, which again is really good. So you say, you know, I want to walk every day or I want to do this or I want to do that. And you can tick it off if you do it or if you don't do it. And as you see, as you look at it, it's a real motivator, it motivates you. And you can do whatever, you know, you can say, I want to read five pages of a book each day. Uh, and it's just good, you know, it doesn't have to be something physical, but whatever you like. So that's, a, that's the next point. The next point is set realistic goals. And also short-term goals, easily attainable goals. They don't have to be massive, but do short-term goals. And again, it gives you the satisfaction when you tick those off, it motivates you to get out and keep doing it. Whether it's walking a certain amount of steps a day or yeah, some sort of exercise, maybe it's stretching for 10 minutes a day or walking up and down a few steps. If you do that, it really uh, motivates you to keep going. The next point is uh, take up mindfulness. Use meditation or yoga. That's really gonna help you mentally, which in turn will help you physically. So it's another very important point. You know, you don't have to be too formal about it. Maybe try to set aside a few minutes every morning or at night time just before you go to bed. And to tie into that, put in some gratitude. Think about the good things that happened in that day, you know, today. What's, uh, what's one good thing? Instead of always focusing on the bad things, there's plenty of bad things. All you have to do is turn on the news at night. They're filled with bad things. There's all sorts of studies around to say that uh, you know, fear sells. So when they have a negative story, a bad story on the news, they know they're gonna get lots of views on it. So if you only watch the news all the time, you'd think the whole world is just about to fall apart. And it's always like that. If you think about in the past, the years gone by, there's always some big catastrophe that was just about to happen and the, you know, the, almost the end of the world but never seems to happen. Lots of bad things do happen. I'm not saying bad things don't happen, but you don't have to focus on it all the time. You've got a choice on what you focus on day to day. And time goes by. I'm a really big believer on you should only focus on the things that you have direct control over. You know, it's no use focusing on what's happening on the other side of the world. It's good to be aware of it but you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours thinking about that and focusing on it. You know, worrying whether it's good or bad or whatever, because whatever you think, it only affects you, doesn't affect the people over there on the other side of the world. So yeah, that's the next point. The next one is don't be scared to get professional guidance. You know, occupational therapists or physios, if you're having any issues with your body, any little injuries, you know, it's probably a good idea to reach out to an occupational therapist or a physio, a professional that knows what they're talking about, that might be able to fix that problem for you very easily. I'll give you advice on how you can fix it yourself without taking medication. Like I think medication is the, should be the last resort. There's lots of things that you can do to help without taking medication, obviously depending on your, your issue, but so seek out occupational therapists, physios, things like that if you've got issues you're having with your body and they might be able to help you fix the problem or get better much quicker. The last point is work on your resilience. So there's a book called Resilience Project 
by Hugh Van Kallenberg, I think his name is. I probably butchered that name, but you'll find it if you just search for the Resilience Project. I read his book a couple of years ago. It's a fantastic book. It talks about gratitude and empathy. And he tells a couple of different stories in the book, which are really interesting. They made a big impact on me. So one was, um, well, he talks about how stressed everyone is all the time and how everyone's sort of focusing on all the negative things and there's not enough uh, focus on the positive things and people don't show enough gratitude. And he was a school teacher, this guy. And uh, you know, he wasn't really sure what he was going to do. And so he was, just, he was teaching and you know, all the kids were st stressed and everything. And he, somehow he went off to India and he went off in the back of you know, the country, India. And as uh, you all know, India is a very poor country. I actually went there for t a tennis conference about 15 years ago. But anyway, so getting back to the story, he uh, was a teacher at this uh, primary school in India and he said that they were so poor. And uh, so I won't go too much into it, but he was, the, the gist of the, the story is the kids were so thankful for him being there and they so thankful for everything they had. And compared with all our kids here in Australia, they had absolutely nothing. Like they didn't have desks or anything, you know, they were sort of sitting on the floor for their classes and and he it really made a big impact on him. He couldn't get over how grateful they are over there and they didn't have anything. So uh, yeah, so I'm, I guess I'm just encouraging you to be grateful for what you have and also focus on empathy for other people too. I think that will make a big difference in your well-being. So they're the points I wanted to cover today. Hopefully uh, you like those. I'd love to hear your comments about those. Please leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to build up my channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like the topics. And if you do, uh, share it with other people, let them know about it. And hopefully I'll see you soon. It's a beautiful day today in Melbourne. Best day we've had for a long time. Hence uh, the sunshine and uh, I've taken a couple of layers off again today. But yeah, beautiful day. So hopefully the weather's starting to turn. It's gonna be a bit warmer. As I said, hope you had a good day and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. So guys, I'll just splice in a couple of little clips from what I was doing earlier today. Remember I told you I did something that I probably shouldn't have done. I think uh, men over 60 have a very high injury and accident rate uh, when they go up ladders. And uh, so, yeah, have a look. Only take a minute. Tell me what you think. Was it a good idea or a bad idea? All right, see you soon. Bye. So I'm not really sure if I should do what I'm about to do because it's, uh, I think it's the highest demographic for accidents. I'm about to clean out the roof. Getting up on that ladder. Let's see how I go. So just getting up on the roof here, got to clean out these gutters, look at them. There's a lot of junk up here that I've got to clean off the roof. Got to clean it off before it starts raining. It's going to rain in a couple of days. Alright, so I've cleaned up that. This is my third bucket full. And I've got all that to go still. So I reckon I'll have probably seven or eight buckets full of this from the spout. Right. So I've cleaned out the gutters. So, pretty happy about that. So now I've just got to get down without falling off the roof and I'll be happy. But yeah, I had to clean out the gutters, that was important.